Today on Dear Founder, you're gonna learn how to make more money in less time, and you're gonna learn how to scale your business. Found her, Leah Fink, is one of the co-founders of Williamsburg Pizza in Brooklyn, New York, and she also is a leadership coach. She has taken the blueprint that she has used with her husband to build Williamsburg Pizza from nothing to six locations, including one in Omaha, Nebraska, to help you grow, scale your business and make it successful. I am so excited for you to meet Leah. She's actually someone that I grew up with and I've known for a very long time. And today's episode is filled with so many incredible nuggets of information that you can apply to your business today. And it's funny because there are pieces of information that seem so sensical, but when you hear them and you hear someone else telling you what to do, you can put them in action immediately and you can start seeing a difference. Tune in. Welcome back to another episode of Dear Founder. You just heard me introduce you to Leah Fink, but I just want to say that I am so personally excited to have her here today for so many reasons, mainly because I've known Leah for a really, really long time, and we were just lamenting how we met or we ran into each other for the first time ever when we were on Ben Yehuda Street, both of us in high school when we were on trips to Israel, and now here we are a lot of years later, I'm not even going to calculate, but a lot of years later, and we are in a WhatsApp group together for Jewish moms supporting each other since October 7th. And we have reconnected. And Leah is here today wearing so many different hats because that is who she is. But Leah Fink is the co-founder of Williamsburg Pizza. She's also a leadership coach. She has helped so many entrepreneurs with their businesses. And I'm so excited to have her here. So Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm so happy. I'm so happy you're here. Um, and, and just watching you in action in our group is, was like, I need to have Leah on the podcast. So you That's are so really perfect. a force. We, um, we connect on being accidental activists, I think in this time, both of us. <laughs> yes, that is, for, that is for sure. So I'd love for you to kick this off by telling our community who you are and sharing your story as to how you got to where you are today. Okay, great. I'll fast forward a little bit past Ben Yehuda Street. <laughs> and we both went to Michigan together. So that we is probably, true. we should probably say go blue here, like just, you know, um, to make it official. <laughs> um, I came to New York in the education fields, straight out of college, mostly, and um in terms of what I do now, I am a leadership coach. I help a lot of entrepreneurs um, figure out what they want to do, build their businesses, scale their businesses, be more successful. It came about from my work in education and especially education leadership. Um, I um, went to Columbia for grad school for education leadership and then ended up teaching um, one of the courses and really fell in love with all the aspects of um, of leadership and then practice it in the schools on opening brand new schools and um, doing some administration stuff. Um, I'm going to make this part of the story shorter, but in other like articles or on my website, I, I make it longer. But after I had my second child, my daughter, Sydney, um, I went out on maternity leave and as is in the world of, um, America and childcare and how we treat mothers, I really got pushed out of that job on maternity leave and went back to the job, um, for a couple months, just because it was our family's health insurance. And, you know, I didn't really have the next thing set up and really spent those months thinking about what I wanted to do next. Um, as you mentioned, we own a chain of pizzerias. So my husband had jumped out of Wall Street, started the first pizzeria as a side project, worth, worked both for two years, and now does pizza full time. I say that to say that I sort of had a blueprint for entrepreneurship. So when thinking about what I wanted to do next, um, this was something that wasn't like a, a foreign concept to me. I had seen someone, you know, my partner and in our family be able to do it and be successful. Um, and I do think that that gave me some of the confidence to um, know that I could build something for myself and be successful at it. 
Um, so at that point, starting to build, I leaned on both my leadership skills and my community building skills. Um, I was always running mom's nights out and new mom's groups. I um, helped moderate the neighborhood online parent group that's like 7,000 people. So I started experimenting in those areas. And then I hired a business coach. A lot of my friends who are entrepreneurs were using one. And I hired her to help her figure out, to help me figure out how to streamline all these things I was doing, all these hats, as you said, you know, that I still wear. And it turned out that coaching was the umbrella that it all fell under. So at that point, I got trained as a coach. Um, a lot of my clients are entrepreneurs. A lot of them are entrepreneurs who are also moms. I help people figure out what they want to do. I help them um, navigate speed bumps along the way. I help them have confidence in what they're doing and um, all the way up to scaling businesses. So I want to talk about, before we kind of get into the leadership aspect, I want to talk about that blueprint that you have mm -hmm. for your coaching business with Williamsburg Pizza. So can you kind of just like paint a picture as to how much it's grown. And I mean, it's, it's very big. And it's like, if you are in New York, like, and elsewhere, to, I mean, it's not just like a New York phenomenon, like people love it. You guys have really done an incredible job with it. And I remember, I remember like when you guys started it and I remember, you know, seeing things online and whatnot, but it has really exploded. And you have, you and your partner, your husband have made this an incredible business. Thank you. Thanks for those compliments. It was actually like kind of a hilarious thing. Um, we grew up together where we grew up, like all the nice Jewish girls from Detroit don't go on to be pizza, pizzeria owners, right? It's kind of like an odd thing. Um, and it started out, like I said, as a side project. My husband was working on Wall Street in 2008 when things were crashing. Um, and I think he had in his head like, okay, Wall Street's not going to be my future, you know, and he always had sort of a entrepreneur, entrepreneurially, uh, why can't I say that word, entrepreneur brain um, and always wanted a, he always said he always wanted a piece of New York and he had this eye on the space and said to the landlords, if it ever becomes available, I want it. And when it did, he took the leap to, you know, take the space even before we knew it would be pizza. Did a little bit of market research, which means that in our neighborhood, there's no pizza within seven blocks, which in New York is very far. Um, found the chef, built it out. The brand obviously worked. And then growing it from one, now we have six, you said. there's So our sixth one, our most recent is Omaha, Nebraska. Oh my God. Why <laughs> Omaha? Because our partner, who Johnny started it with, Aaron, is from Omaha. So when we, you know, went to think about what the first one was, he had connections there. He had spent some time during COVID there, and that's what worked out. Will there be one in Detroit? I, I know everybody asked me that. I hope so. It would be the same as like if it was Detroit, and it, it does make sense. I think it would. I think it would kill it, especially in downtown. Um. So. That's a story. He did both things for two whole years and then was able to um, move to full-time pizza. I have always had pieces. In the beginning, Like in, I started the Instagram account. I started the Facebook page. I you know, helped with partnerships. I, you know, those things. I weave in and out of pizza as needed. Um, for example, when we opened Omaha, because like that was the big stretch on our whole team, I was jumping in with doing some more New York partnerships, PR stuff, you know, just like whatever's needed. I always say like my biggest job with the pizzeria is um, that I can send friends pizza whenever I want. That's so funny. <laughs> so, so yeah, knee surgery, you get a pizza. Somebody just had a baby, you get pizza. Last night we had a, a moms of school night pizza and then you're just a hero. It's pretty, but like that is also the best way to expand the business because so like maybe if someone hasn't tried the pizza, right. and then they are like, oh, the pizza is so great, right? So I mean, it's also a t very targeted sampling opportunity as 100%, well. 100%. So how is it that you apply this blueprint to your leadership coaching business? Yeah, 
I would say the first thing, um, and I know you're going to ask me about tips later, but I do think the first thing is that um, ability to take a big risk, right? And jump into the unknown about, you know, s- starting from the bottom and believing that, you know, you can make it a real thing, make it successful. Um, and it really does take a full leap of faith. Um, and I do think that being able to see that with the pizzerias is some like the first thing that, you know, gave me some confidence to believe that I could do this too. Okay. So when you started your coaching business, Mm -hmm. and this is something that I think is really important for a lot of people to hear. There's a lot of people who listen are service-based businesses. And the biggest thing is like, well, like, how do I get clients? You know what I mean? So like you, you take this leap of faith and you decide you're going to coach entrepreneurs. You have a blueprint because you've helped to build a successful business, but where is it that you start and how is it that you start getting clients? It's a great question. And I do think that that's something all of us don't talk about enough, right? Cause it's such a hard thing. Um, and I do, I actually do think that that blocks a lot of people from starting what they want to do because it seems so scary. I would say first things first is just putting yourself out there, right? Telling people what you do and how you can help them. Um, Asking, like I I lean on community a lot. I think that that's like another, you know, of my core um, learnings from doing this. And so like saying to your community, this is what I'm doing. Who can I help? Who can I be connected to? Um, What rooms can I be in? to meet people, um, or even like give talks to, or, you know, offer my services to so that I can get in people's worlds and in their minds that if somebody needs leadership coaching or they know somebody who does, then they know exactly what I'm doing. And then they can come to me and see if, you know, I can help them. So, you start this business and when, can you give me a date on it? Sure. Um, let me remember. Like just, I'm just trying to like give, get a frame of reference. You know, it was like right before COVID or like in, like weirdly, I would say like in lockdown, like probably okay. June of 2020. Okay. So you put yourself out there and you decide that you're going to do this. What was kind of like the response that you initially got? And I think that that is a really important question too, because so many people are worried about like, how are people, how are people going to react to the fact that I'm doing this now? And you, this was a bit of a departure from what you were doing. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, and I, and I do think that, um, my social circles and friends have shifted Over the years, I think all of ours do, you know, and I have, you and I were talking about people that we've known since we've grown up. I keep those for sure. Super close. Those are like my, like that feels like cousins to me. Right. Um, And I do think when I started this, there was a shift in who my friend circles were. Um, I, I spent more time with a lot of entrepreneurs and people who are doing their own thing and who people who are doing different things. And all of those people have been super supportive. Right. And I think that's why I, you know, have spent more time with them, gravitated towards them, um, gotten advice from them. You know, it's, it's, I think it's one of the key things that has made this successful is being able to be in rooms with those kind of people. And then on the other hand, and I think that this is like a really honest, true thing to say, I think other people filtered out, um, because, you know, sometimes people don't love, you know, either being so loud and out there. Sometimes people don't love what the topic of it is. Like there is some stigma around coaching, as you know, like I don't have to say that out loud. People mm-hmm. just get bad feelings yeah. from it. And I think that's just like part of life. You know, the old, the older we get, the more we get into rooms with people that really fit and cheer us on and make us feel good. 
Um, even like we were talking about the, the Jewish moms group that we both landed in, um, like that, we talk all day, every day. And like a lot of us had no, no idea who some of us were a couple months ago. Right. And it's, it's so crazy. Right. Yeah. Um, so tell me like, where is your business now four years later? Like I want you to, you to paint the picture of exactly what you offer and what it is that you do. Like, absolutely. Sure. Um, so I have over the years built up a really strong one-on-one business. So I work with people. I talk to them on zoom, um, every other week. I usually do that for a year long contract and it's always focused on what individual person wa- wants to get out of the year. And it's so customized. I, there's no, there's no true blueprint or true curriculum or, you know, um, signature program. Like I don't believe in any of that. It is individual from person to person. Um, and as I mentioned, a lot of these people are entrepreneurs. So trying to one, figure out how to be a good leader. If it's a person who has other people in their business, which not all of them do, um, how to, um, scale their businesses. Um, another thing I focus on majorly is how to, use less time for more money, right? So like, how can you um, concentrate on and do the things that you need to do within your business? Like, I think a lot of times it's the bigger picture thinking, it is the creativity, and sometimes it is the um, the connecting with people, right? Or getting people in or sales or whatever you want to call it. And then how can you um, delegate? or make smaller the things that we as leaders, and again, this all goes back to leadership, don't need to be doing. Um, so whether that means different people on your team or outsourcing or you know using um, VAs or whatever it is, I think that's really one of the tricks. Um, I think I veered off a little bit. I'm like, no, yeah. no, no. I'm so glad that you shared all of that because so, but with, here's the other thing that I want to ask. So you, you said you have this robust one-on-one business, yeah. but now you are also doing it in groups as well, correct? Exactly. Well, and that is again, like uh, practicing what I preach. I found that I can do this in groups of people. And it is also sometimes more powerful because you have that group of people cheering you on and answering questions. And like, as I described with putting myself in groups and rooms of people who are entrepreneurs and who do cheer me on and who do put me in rooms, it's like, you know, reflective of all of that. Um, And I have just found these groups to be super powerful. So it's so funny that you say that because I... I, I I had all these one-on-one clients and I found that I was telling them all the same thing. And they were paying me a lot of money every single month to sit down with me. And I was telling, you know, Susie, the same thing I was telling Jane. And then I would also say, but Susie, you should meet Jane. Okay. Exactly. So I was like, this is crazy. And so I was like, well, this is also inefficient for me because I can only take a certain amount of one-on-one clients per month. So that is how my group mentorship was created online because I was like, I have all these resources. I have this framework that I follow and it's not a blueprint. It's definitely a like, this is like, these are the steps you need to take to build your business and market your business, but we should be doing it together. And it's more efficient for them. It's more efficient for me. I can scale it. And then I've said to them, and if you want one-on-one time, you can buy it from me on my calendar versus you have to talk to me three times a month and you might not always need me. And yeah. so it's so funny how hearing you say this because it really mirrors my own shift. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but it's so true. The group is so much more powerful. Like I'm watching really these is. women online, like interact and engage and support one another. And like, it's not just me telling them what to do. They're telling each other what to do. And that's amazing. Right. Exactly. It really is. And it, it is, you know, the power of, especially when the group gels, like I always love it. Like they meet the, the first time, then they meet like the second time and the third time. And you're like, Oh my God, you got, this is magic. You guys are going to love each other. This is, I, I, Lindsay, I wonder if this is like both of us being camp girls. Maybe. 
you know, and I, th- I feel like sometimes that like the spirit of community and togetherness and. Well, and I have like, I've, I like after every group call I have, cause we have three group calls a month. I get multiple messages like in emails being like, I love this group. I love the size. I love everyone in it. And it, it's so different than every other group. Like you just really attract a nice group of women. And like, I was like, Oh my God, this is like amazing, you know? Yeah. And it's, And definitely, I think, too, is like how you put the group out into the world. Like, you know, if you're encouraging them to to connect with one another, they're going to form a community versus if you don't. But I just I don't know how you feel. And like, I want you to answer this. But like, don't you find it so much more effective and efficient for everyone to be in a group? Effective, efficient and more fun. (laughs) Yeah. You know, like my sister-in-law said, like, if to me, if you had a motto, it would be like here for the vibes. <laughs> and I think like you take the business like effective, efficient, and like it's it, you know, you the emails that you get, the text, and I get those too. Like I just love this group. Like it and when they end, I'm so sad this group is over. And you know, I I try very hard to keep everybody connected. Um, but yeah, it's just like the best part. It really does um I don't know how you feel, but one of my favorite jobs in life is camp counselor. Oh my God. I, when I'm interviewed, that's what I say. I mean, I say all the time, like the most of like effective job I ever had was being a camp counselor and like taught me everything I needed to learn how to survive in the working world. A hundred percent. And, and so like that brings me back to the spirit of camp counselor for sure. Like I, sometimes I dream about having a business card that says, Leah Wiseman Fink Professional Camp Counselor. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so there's two things I want to focus on based on what you your your like core competencies that you just that you just um, shared with us. The first is um, I want to talk about scaling businesses because you've done it, and you know I think that a lot of people get really stuck. And I just shared with you like how I figured out my own way to scale my business. And, and that took time, right? Like it wasn't like something that the, the sky opened up and my business scaled. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs get stuck in the, this is where my business is. I don't know how to make it bigger. I don't know how to make it more efficient. So my question for you is what would be like three tips that you share with your clients when it comes to scaling businesses? Right. Great question. Um, I think a lot of it depends on what, kind of business it is and what models there are for scaling. So one of the first things I would do is, and like you and I just talked about how our scaling is super similar, right? And and maybe let's pretend you talked to me a year ago and you hadn't gone there and I shared with you how I had done it. Then I think you might have this model that you're like, oh, like, you know, key unlocked. So I would say one tip is like, get with people in your industry, look at, who has done this and ask questions, right? And take notes and figure out how this can be done. Um, I would say another tip is get really good at delegating, right? So if it is a business and it's like a different scaling model than you and I talked about, figuring out exactly what are those things that you need to be doing, right? Like you call them zone of genius, you call them whatever else, What are those things? Is it creativity? Is it schmoozing? Is it, um, you know, writing in your business? And then like very strictly or be disciplined about delegating everything else out. Um, So I would say that those are two tips. Did you ask me for a third tip? If you have one. (laughs) Um, I would say, um, I, you know, I think this, this, sort of maybe it blends all but um get mentorship and get help and i think that that is like i think people can really um speed things up and make the process way more efficient if they are getting support in some way whether it is a group or a coach or a um you know someone who's done it before i just think that that's one of the keys to making it easier and way more like i said of course it always comes back to easier and way more fun than it might be if you are struggling through it and getting frustrated and getting down on yourself. Love all those answers. And I couldn't agree with you more. And especially when it comes to like 
asking people within your niche, like how they've scaled. And I think too, and this is kind of just an aside that we're at a point now, whereas maybe like five to seven years ago, people would get really defensive if you asked about that. And I think that like where we are now, and I'm like proud and glad to say this, I think people are much more apt to share and recognize that there's like enough to go around for everyone. And that it's so much better when you have people to bounce things off of and talk to versus like worrying that someone's going to like copy you because it's not copying. Like you're, you're, you are you and people are subscribing to you. Right. So like, I, I think it's like, I think working with each other and, and helping one another is like the best thing that you could do. Yeah, I totally agree. And I love it when people come to me and there's someone who is my sister's close friend who has just started a coaching business. And she's like, you know, can we sit down for X amount of time? I was like, great, please take everything I've learned. Take everything I've, you know, figured out, you know, the last couple of years. Um, And I, I love doing that. It's like, and if I can't, like if I, if my bandwidth is, I, I feel like, like never be afraid to ask. Oh, totally. Totally. And what's the worst that someone says? It's no, right. That's like the, the follow up to that is like, sure. someone says, no, who cares? Like, then right. that's the worst that happens. You yeah. Know? yeah. But so, yeah, you don't, ask, you don't get what you don't ask for. On the same note, something else that really piqued my interest when you were kind of talking about your core competencies and things that you help people with is making the more of your time and, you know, less time and make like working less and making more money. And who doesn't want that one? And two, a lot of the women who listen to this podcast are moms. And just like you and me, we are stretched between working and building businesses, building businesses, so working on and in our companies, but then also, you know, having kids at home and being there for our kids and showing up at all of these activities and, Um, you know, and it's not just moms, obviously, who want to make more money for less time. But I think that when you're wearing so many different hats, it it does help to have tips. So what are some things that you would tell to our community in order to make more money for less time? Yeah. Um, I'm going to say something counterintuitive first, which is, it seems counterintuitive. I don't think it actually is. Where can you block your time? Right. So like looking at your calendar, even technically and just saying like, what, what, what time is kid time officially, right? Like five to seven, I'm on dinner time and Wednesday night, actually for me, I always take the three to five to take my son to Hebrew school. Cause I actually like the half hour, you know, that we travel together and get to talk in the car. So I think there's like looking at what are your non-negotiables that you want in your calendar. And then also, um, I personally, and I think that this is like my creative brain and I do have ADHD and whatever else, I need some blocks in my calendar that are unscheduled, right? That are like, and I actually use sort of like Monday morning and Friday afternoon for that, but it just helps me having breathing room. And as moms, there's always stuff that comes up, scheduling stuff, you know, house stuff. So I think that those are some things I do to be like, okay, then these are my working hours, right? And and I'm not going to let them bleed into kid hours or even my like non hours, you know, just like being pretty disciplined about that. Um, And then I think secondly, it's, it's that figuring out how to, how to be most efficient. Like you and I both said groups, but it might be delegating or it might be, you know, um, changing your offers or it might be, um, do you need to charge more? Right. Like if you're super stretched, Um, and your schedule is full, you know, this is something I talk to clients about all the time, then it's probably time to um, move your rates. So I love, I just, I want to say this, I love what you do in just in hearing, in hearing you share all these tips, because they're very applicable. And it's not rocket science. And sometimes you just need someone to help you figure out what it is that you can do. And I want to just point out, like, when you apply a lot of these principles to your business and to your life, that's when you start seeing exponential growth, both from like an awareness standpoint and also from a revenue standpoint. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're in this to do is to help people build their businesses and make more money. And, and, you know, and I, but I think though that a lot of times people, 
no think they know what they should be doing but they don't know how to apply it to their business and their life and that is essentially what you do and like one of the things that was um in your bio was how like you helped someone recently to double their revenue in one year and with these principles yeah and i just want to say about that particular person took a full maternity leave for herself in her business that she runs Right. And it's like it, 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 that is the blocking before, you know, the taking your calendar and saying like, OK, these three months I, I'm not working. How can I set everything up to that point so that it works? Right. And, and I, I thought it was like a really powerful example of like, no, you actually can do this if it's what you want to do. Well, and I just think so many women business owners, entrepreneurs, founders, however you want to frame it, just get so in the weeds that they can't take a step back and right. look at some of these things. And when you have someone helping you do it, it's an investment into you and into your company that is worth it because you will see the ROI on the other side. Exactly. Absolutely. Right. So I want to leave with the same question that I leave with everyone. Okay. And that is what are three actionable tips that you would give to a founder who's just starting out? Great question. Um, put yourself in the rooms for sure. Figure out what those rooms are. Make the friends, go to the events, bring a pizza if you have to, but like definitely online, get in the rooms. Um, two is have confidence. Look around at other people who have done this before. Um, use it as an example to understand that you can get where you want to go. And then my third is, um, I say this a lot about what a mark of a successful entrepreneur is. And I think it is being able to with, withstand the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. It really is about resilience. And so being able to keep your eye on the prize and have the belief that it will work. And also when you're having a really down week, when you, you know, get a lot of no's or at least a, a sale, just like understanding that after that, there will be yeses and up weeks and, you know, magazine articles and podcast interviews and, you know, just being able to really remember that and wrap your head around it and come back to it every day. Leah Fink, leadership coach and co-founder of Williamsburg Pizza. Thank you so much for being here. I am so glad that we have found our way back into each other's lives. I can't wait to come to New York and have dinner together, probably some pizza. Yeah. But um, but I thank you for being here and for sharing all this knowledge with you. We will let everyone know where to find you in the show notes. Great. Thank you so much for having me. This is amazing. In case you missed it, we'll be closing out every single episode this year with our number one takeaway from our conversation. And Leah Fink had so many, but my number one takeaway from today is to find your communities, plural. Figure out your groups, those who lift you up, who support you, who help you grow. Put yourself into those rooms. And that was something that Leah said too. I want to thank Leah for being here today and thank you all for joining our conversation We've been getting so much love for the episodes from this season so far, and I cannot thank you enough. So if you liked today's conversation, I would love it if you left a five-star rating and a review so that others can find this conversation too. That's how others find us. All you have to do is go to ratethispodcast.com forward slash dear found her or click that link in the show notes to leave a review wherever it is that you podcast. If you know someone who we should meet, please send them our Meet a Founder link in the show notes and we'll introduce them to our community through our social media and our website later this year. But for now, I want to thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. Have a great rest of the week and enjoy your weekend. And we will see you again on Tuesday.